One of the great problems that many of us have about lots of areas of life is complacency. We're just happy with how things are and it's like, eh, whatever. And that can mean that we don't invest in our families if we become eh about them, our marriages, uh, our you know investment in kids, investment in our work. You know, complacency leads to poor performance and so on. But there's one form of complacency that's very, very dangerous, and that is when it comes to your standing with God. Let's pray and we'll get into it. Father, thank you for your love and thank you for your word. And we pray as we engage with Zephaniah again, you'll teach us not to be complacent like many in Jerusalem were when you promised to bring your judgment. Help us to be alert and ready and uh, engage with you in everything. We pray that might transform our days. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we're in Zephaniah, we're in chapter 1, and we saw yesterday that uh, God has spoken through Zephaniah to the people of Israel. Uh, presumably it's in the very early days of Josiah's kingship. He's only a boy. His dad's been a monster, uh, and granddad was a monster for most of his life. And his cousin who's uh, also you know, kind of vaguely connected to the royal line, Zephaniah, is preaching uh, the word of the Lord and saying God's judgment's coming. The judgment God promised because of Manasseh and because of Ammon, it's still coming. Josiah, you know, and friends, you want to shape up. Don't be complacent. And we saw yesterday that judgment's coming. We're picking up then chapter 1 and verse 10. On that day, declares the Lord, a cry will go up from the fish gate wailing from the new quarter, and a loud crash from the hills. Wail, you who live in the market district, all your merchants will be wiped out, all who trade with silver will be destroyed. At that time I will search Jerusalem with lamps and punish those who are complacent, who are like wine left on its dregs, who think the Lord will do nothing, either good or bad. Their wealth will be plundered, their houses demolished, Though they build houses, they will not live in them. Though they plant vineyards, they will not drink the wine. And so here is the warning to the complacent in Jerusalem. You know, things, you know, God hasn't brought this judgment he promised on Granddad Manasseh in that time, even though there was great wickedness going on. And so the temptation is to think, well, God will never judge. Yeah, these prophets, these naysayers have come and spoken and yeah, whatever, we'll just get on with life. And in their complacency, they're building their houses, they're planting their vineyards, they're doing the life as normal, not not saying, God, please know what you've said is dreadful and we do not want that. And so what can we do? How, you know, what sacrifices do we need to bring? The, the law is filled with things to do once you know that the nation is guilty of great sin and it tells you how to flee in repentance to God, but that hasn't happened. And so God says the day will come when the cry will go out, but it won't be a cry of repentance. It will be a cry of wailing and shame because his judgment will come. And notice what it will affect. It will affect the whole city. And particularly, he focuses interestingly on the trade. All your merchants will be wiped out. All who trade with silver will be destroyed. And that is, the, the, there's going to be an attack by God on the wealth and the wealth building, which has led to some of the complacency. We're at ease. We're, you know, all this trading is going on. We're an economically strong. You know, there's all the, you know, we've got a great GDP. We've got all the, the factors, the NASDAQ's will or whatever they're, you know, our kind of thing, the Australian Stock Exchange, the ASX index is healthy you know all those things lead us to complacency when it comes to god but we mustn't be complacent i thought of uh something else that we're could be complacent about that's very very dangerous and that is around electricity if you're not careful you think oh i've just put the toast down i've jammed in i'll just stick the knife in complacency can lead to your destruction and god is saying that the complacency of israel has led to him coming and he will judge the complacency and so i thought as a challenge today just in our own thinking and hearts is to think where have i been complacent about my walk with the lord 
You know, am I complacent about my sin? Am I complacent about, you know, I'm just at ease and so I'm doing my thing and, uh, yeah, kind of nothing really affects me. And so God's word, when it comes, even if I'm getting into it regularly, does it just wash over me? I kind of, it's all a blur and, oh, that's nice and lovely. Or, you know, the serious bits where it challenge my thinking and my worldview and my, my practices and how I'm going to engage with people. Does that just kind of all wash over me because I'm complacent? That's a great challenge isn't it and so one of the things maybe to work on uh, you could you know if you take it do a prayer diary or a, a take notes and that kind of thing is to write down and you know where am I being complacent and to start going through the different spheres of life family work um, leisure times hobbies where am I being complacent with about God in the midst of those things? Am I just so caught up in them and going through the routine and getting on that I've let slip God's word, God's strong word, whether it's a word of encouragement, a word of rebuke, a word of you know, a promise or what it, whatever it might happen to be? How am I holding God into God's word and where am I being complacent about it? The people of Israel have become complacent. Where is this judgment? They were saying, well, that judgment was going to come. And uh, yeah, there's hope yet to come in Zephaniah, but don't be complacent. That's the warning. And there, we should take that to heart. We should always take God's word and take it to heart. That's how we don't be complacent. Let's commit ourselves to God. Father, thank you for your word. And we pray, please, that we would not be complacent about our sin, about our walk with you, about your word. We pray that when we hear it, we will be quick to it, believe it and obey it and trust it and follow it and shape our lives around it. Father, help us not to um, ignore what you say, to ignore when other Christians are trying to help us and encourage us and, and possibly rebuke us and strengthen us. We pray, please, that we would be listening well and we pray that we would take on board you and your plan for our lives, your will for us uh, and your ways particularly. Help us to honour you in everything and to never be complacent about our relationship with you. Thank you for the Lord Jesus who saves us. We pray that you will keep reforming our hearts and our lives each and every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless everyone. Catch you again for another devotion next time.